Well, welcome to uh, <laughs> Monday, Money in the Morning on Mondays with Dr. Boyce Watkins. This is something that I want to do where I talk about money on uh, Monday mornings with you guys. And I'm going to start doing this every single week. And uh, we're going to start meeting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, but anyway, uh, today we have some bad news. Uh, today we actually lost a legend. Uh, there's a brother by the name of Clarence Avant. And uh, Clarence Avant uh, just passed away at the age of 92. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Clarence and uh, what his legacy means, uh, what this guy accomplished. He was known as the Godfather, the Black Godfather. Uh, Netflix did a whole documentary about him called The Black Godfather, which is kind of crazy. So we're going to talk about Clarence Avon and just pay tribute to this extraordinary black man. And, uh, and during the, in the meantime, give me an audio check. Let me know you can hear me OK. And also hit that thumbs up button. We're going to get started on DrBoysTV.com right now. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who got to delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to code sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your own. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Welcome to DrBoysTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. I want to say good morning to everybody. And Yoshika, I'll put you on the screen, sister, because I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate all of you. James Keller, I see you in here all the time. And and uh, El Hodge, El Hodge is my man. And God bless all of y'all. Uh, and if I didn't say your name, it's not because I don't appreciate you. It's just because I didn't see it. But uh, I want to say thank you to everybody, all the people that have our backs, all the people that um, believe in the mission, that believe in what we're doing. Because as you guys know, uh, our goal here, is to make sure that by the year 2070, intelligent black people are the most powerful people in the world with the most economically intelligent. Give me a yes if you want us to break generational curses. Give me a yes if you want us to be powerful. Give me a yes if you want our kids uh, to be economically smart. Give, it, give me a yes if you are raising your family to be uh, excellent. Give me a yes if you want, if you believe in black love. Give me a yes if you believe in black owned business. Give me a yes if you want black people to own property. Give me a yes if you are team black people. I think that's really important to start the conversation there and i because i want to make a point uh you know when i wrote my book the 10 commandments of black economic power which by the way it's an amazon bestseller so thank you all to those of you who've, who've taken a look at it uh it, you know when i wrote that book there were people i met white people very nice uh non-black people melanin deficient people you can't hold it against them you know it, we all have our setbacks and uh and basically they would say you know is your book only for black people and i said no anybody can read this book about the same way I can learn about economics from a Jewish person, or I can learn about, you know, uh, something, maybe it's mathematics or Kung Fu or something from an Asian person. Uh, you can learn from intelligent black people. So I said, look, this book is written for intelligent black people, just like uh, an empire of their own, how the Jews invented Hollywood. It was written for the Jewish community. But I recommend all of our students in the black business school to read that book. And the reason I have them do that is because you need to learn from all the cultures. Give me a yes if you follow what I'm saying. You have to learn from all the cultures that are doing excellent things. And I I applaud anybody who's from a culture that is, is known for uh, any form of excellence, whether it's black excellence, Asian excellence, Jewish excellence, white excellence, uh, Ukrainian excellence, whatever it is. All right. So um, so anyway, so let, how many of you all heard? Give me a yes or no. If you heard about Clarence Avant, uh, the black godfather dying at the age of of 92. Uh, how many of you uh, heard about this? Uh, it's, it's very, very sad. Uh, it breaks my heart, you know, but then again, all good things must come to an end. Uh, Clarence Avant, from what, what I understand, was uh, one of the good ones. Uh, you know, I don't know Clarence. I never met Clarence Avant. I do know uh, very well a guy named Kenny Gamble out of Philadelphia. Kenny is one of the black men that I admire the most. He's one of the black people that uh, that I just look up to, that I respect immensely. And uh, Kenny Gamble uh, is very good friends with Clarence Avant. <clears throat> and uh, and basically, uh, and I, in fact, um, my friend Michelle Martin, who uh, – who she and her husband run the urban youth racing school. They, they, she, she claims that that Clarence and Kenny talk every single day, every single day. And I said, man, I bet they have so much to talk about. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that conversation because these are two great black men who have done a lot in uh, entertainment. Uh, these are black men who have, uh, who've accomplished quite a bit. 
these are these are the people you need to learn from. These are you know if you're going into the entertainment industry, I think you should study the Clarence Avons. You should study the Kenny Gambles. You should study the the Barry Gordys. You should study uh, all the legends that came before you. Don't just study what white people tell you to study. Y'all get what I'm saying? Don't just study what your massa what massa has sanctioned you to learn about. Because I'm going to tell you like this, Massa ain't going to give you the cheat code. Do you understand what I'm saying? Massa is not going to give you the cheat code in order in order to figure out how to survive as a black man or black woman in a racist society. So, so give me a yes if you understand that. You got to educate your kids. Uh, one of the, the core values, the, the what we call the black core of three, our three greatest core values in the black business school is that we believe that black people should educate our own children create our own jobs and support black owned businesses. Give me a yes. If you agree with that black core three, educate our own children, create our own jobs, support black owned businesses. So I'm not begging you for an education because I, we are, we can already do that. I'm not begging you for no job because I don't want to work for you. I don't want to be your slave. I want to work for myself. I want to work for my people. Uh, and then also uh, support black owned businesses. Uh, if we don't support black businesses, then nobody will. Uh, and the number one problem that black owned businesses have is that they get boycotted against by white people. And then they also get boycotted against by black people. I don't blame white people for being white. I will never blame white people for being white. But I will blame you if you're not supporting your own, if you're not finding some reason uh, to help your own people get ahead. Uh, that's your fault. You know, and so uh, anyway, and actually, before I move into Clarence and we're going to talk about Clarence, you all know how I am. I, I give you all the whole breakdown and tell you everything that's, that's kind of uh, relevant to the topic. But before we dig into Clarence, uh, I, there was a person the other day I saw a video by Mike Epps. Mike Epps. I never met Mike Epps. Um, I, I well, I, I met him, but it wasn't like hanging out with him. Uh, he's a good friend of a, a really good friend of mine, Willie D. As you know, Willie D from the Ghetto Boys, he was in, in my wedding, and uh, we're very good friends. And uh, and Mike Epps is a good friend of Willie. So uh, anyway, Mike Epps did a great video where he made a great point. He made a great point. I promise you. I know some of y'all are like, like, can we get to the point? Can we get to it? I'm sorry, I, I don't run. I can't run a channel for short attention spans. I gotta, I gotta flesh it out so y'all can understand what's going on. So give me permission to do that. I hope that's okay. Uh, anyway, Mike Epps did a great video and I put it actually on my Instagram. My Instagram is Dr. Boyce Finance. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up here so you can see it. I put this video up and Michael's talking about gentrification. Okay. And I love it. You know what I love? I love it when entertainment entertainers start talking about wealth. I love when entertainers are talking about black economics. I love it when entertainers are talking about ownership because every study shows Nielsen did a study. They showed that, that, that black people listen to entertainer entertainers more than anybody else. Y'all listen to your entertainers and you listen to your preachers. So when the preachers and the entertainers are saying the right things, uh, that 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 does move the community forward. So Mike Epps was talking about gentrification and basically how white people kind of tricked us. Uh, he said that, uh, you know, we were out just selling dope. And we didn't value the neighborhood. We were just kind of doing what we were doing. And uh, and they took that old cheap property. They had a plan where they were going to take that old cheap property, the, those those old neighborhoods, the places that you didn't want to live, those places where you were trying to get away from. Remember remember those days when they used to tell you to get out of the hood? You got to get out of the hood. You got to get out of the hood. You got to get out of the hood, right? That's what you did, right? So, so, so you did all that, right? So you end up going to college. You go $100,000 in debt at the University of Blankety Blank, uh, with some white-owned school. You, you transfer in $100,000 in wealth to the white community, and then you end up going to work for a big white company, and then you get a house in the white suburbs, right? Well, at that same time, they had a plan. And Mike Epps talked about this. And I congratulate him for bringing this up because I, I'm going to go in. He done threw the alley-oop. So let me go in and do the slam dunk, okay? So he he's Penny Hardaway. He threw the alley-oop. I'm going to come in like Shaq and Duncan, and we're going to tear the rim down real quick. So after we do that, we're going to jump into Clarence Avon, I promise you. But I got to, you know, on, uh, you know, in the morning, I got I to lay it out here for you. So here's what Mike brought up, and here's what I'm going to finish with. So Mike said, the whole time they had a plan. They were going to take those neighborhoods that we lived in and they were going to turn them into uh, into condos and expensive property and push the black people out. They're going to push the black people out. Why? Well, because the black people did not own the land that we were on. Uh, they came in and they bought it up. Uh, and then if you're paying rent, they raise the rent and then they pretty much boot you out of there. Right. They did that in Chicago. That's why now a lot of the gun violence is kind of spread out in the suburbs. It used to be all right in one little section. Now it's all over the place. The places where the Cabrini Green projects used to be is now like super expensive. It's hard to live there because, you know, all the yuppies have moved in. Well, the the, the Michael's 100 percent correct on this point. But the thing that. Uh, that I want to drill into. And somebody made a comment on this and they were and they were kind of being mean. I'm not going to say it in a mean way. I'm going to try to be nice when I say this. But the person that made this comment that I really liked is he said, it's not somebody else's fault if you're stupid. Now, I'm not going to call anybody stupid, right? I'm not saying that at all. But I am going to say that, you know, we were in these neighborhoods for decades. 
we could have owned this property for decades. We had the opportunity to buy, to learn how to buy houses and all that for debt. Why? Well, because the houses were cheap. Nobody wanted that house. Nobody wanted grandma's house because grandma's house was in a depleting neighborhood. And so, uh, so, so ultimately your goal was to get away from where you live to go be in a place that is occupied by strangers. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. And so let me tell you about Kenny Gamble. Let me tell you, and, and I'm, and I'm drilling. I, I, y'all, know, y'all know me. I like to, I like to, I guess, cause I'm trained to be an airplane pilot. The way you land an airplane, by the way, is you don't go straight into the airport. It's like sex. You can't just go right in for the kill. You got to kind of hover around a little bit. So when you land an airplane, you got to go into what they call the traffic pattern where you circle the airport and then you announce where you're going. And then as you announce where you're going, you then start going in. You say, okay, uh, I'm on the final approach for one way, one three. That's what you do. You have to circle in. You can't go straight into the airport. So I'm not going to go straight in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to circle into the topic for today by helping us understand some other important issues that surround why People like Clarence Avon are so important for you to understand. So Kenny Gamble, let me tell you about Kenny Gamble, why I love and admire this man to the ends of the earth. <laughs> he, had, he just had his 80th birthday. Bad, bad dude. He's from Gamble and Huff. Has anybody heard about Gamble and Huff, the, the songwriting duo there in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I also said they created the whole sound of Philadelphia, basically, uh, before the Jill Scotts and everybody else. They all bowed to Kenny Gamble. <clears throat> let me tell you what Kenny did that was brilliant. When Kenny got his first record deal, Kenny got a bunch of money and Kenny went to some old guy. I think the guy happened to be Jewish because they're, they're known for that. And it's not a, I don't think it's an inaccurate stereotype that they're good with money. And he said, what do I do with money? How do I manage money? So he said the guy took him in the back, sat him down and showed him how to how to manage his money, where to invest in all these other things. And then let me tell you what Kenny did that was beautiful and brilliant. Kenny went to his old neighborhood in the 1970s and 1960s and went up and, and, and went and bought all that property that nobody wanted. His mother said, I don't want, he bought the, he bought one of the houses for his mother. Y'all, y'all listening. Now I need y'all to listen. This is the cheat code. Your, your ancestors had the cheat code. Y'all just ain't listening. Y'all listening to dummy rappers and you're listening to white folks, but you're not listening to the people who came along before you had integration, before you had affirmative action, before you had corporate jobs and student loans. This is what Kenny get. Kenny went and he, he, he bought all these houses in his old neighborhood that nobody wanted. These houses were selling for dirt cheap. $5,000, $2,000. Well, who wants that? That's a vacant lot. There ain't nothing but crackheads over. There ain't nothing but ain't nothing but uh heroin addicts. There ain't nothing but but prostitutes on them. And he did that. Kenny didn't buy just a couple houses. He was, he's making big money now. He's an entertainer. He bought hundreds, hundreds of houses in downtown Philadelphia. This is real. This is y'all need y'all y'all get so used to hearing the negative stories. You keep you, so you get so used to hearing about the times where we lost that you don't understand, you don't get to hear about the times where we won. So Kenny bought hundreds of houses. And do you know that now when, when the white folks came back, if they wanted to live in the area, they had to go talk to Kenny. Do you understand that now to this day, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't watch another man's pockets like that, but, but, but from what I understand, I remember doing a tour of the neighborhood in Philadelphia and they were like, that belongs to Kenny Gamble. 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 I said, okay, this man's a king. He's a real king. This man has an empire around here. This is beautiful. And, and, and so, so now all that property is worth millions of dollars. And let me tell you the last little piece of this. This is the last little piece I want y'all to understand. And we're going to get to Clarence Avant next because I want to give, I want to pay tribute to this extraordinary man. The, here's the crazy part about it. Do you know that when Kenny started doing this, Kenny told me this himself, and I, I love this guy. I, I think he's amazing. He said that he went to his friends in the entertainment industry. Uh oh, let me turn this off. Sorry, guys. My phone, it's so funny when your phone rings, and there we go. All right. Boom. Okay. Now I'm back. Sorry for that. Kenny Gamble. Pay attention now. We're back to Kenny Gamble. All right. Y'all y'all listening? Give me a yes if you're listening. So Kenny goes to his friends in the entertainment industry, all his buddies that are making big money, you know, writing songs, performing music. He knew them all. And all of them were doing the stereotypical stuff. They were buying fancy cars, spending their money on random women. They were uh, buying, you know, going on vacation every other week. They were buying jewelry, 80 pounds of jewelry all the way from the, the neck down. They were doing all kind, everything with their money except investing it. Nobody would partner with him on his idea. Nobody would partner with him. 
And so when Kenny went off and did this, and let me tell you about this, the, some of those same Negroes, from what I understand, it, and Kenny can correct me on this, but a lot of these same people, years later when Kenny's a multimillionaire, started hating on him. They're like, oh, well, well you just you just lucky because you rich. You just you think you better than everybody else because you rich. And, and, and he's like, I invited y'all to participate. You didn't see the vision. You didn't see the mission. You didn't understand the opportunity. So, so this is what a lot of you are going through, and this is why this is the first encouragement I have to give you this morning, so we can get started on, on uh, going deeper into the topic. And if anybody wants to come in and be a smart ass in the chat, you can just write. Doctor Boyce gets to the point at eighteen minutes and twenty two seconds because I'm gonna need about three minutes to finish this point. A lot of you have vision that is a long term vision. A lot of you have the curse of delayed gratification. I call it a curse because it feels like a curse because everybody around you is small-minded and can't see past next Tuesday. You trying to look at a 20-year plan, they can't even make a 20-day plan. Give me a yes if you know what I'm talking about. Give me a yes if you're going through that. So you describe your big vision to your homeboy where y'all both going to get rich together and they completely can't see it at all. They're like, well, well am I am I going to get a paycheck? What? Why am I going to give you a paycheck to pursue a grand vision that's going to make us both millionaires. What are you talking about? So, so I'm encouraging all of you who have that blessing. I am. I, I called it a curse of delayed gratification, but really, it's a gift. If you if you double down on the gift, I want to encourage everybody who's got the gift of delayed gratification, the gift of a vision from God, the ability to pursue a long term objective, to keep moving, keep marching, keep stepping forward. Introduce it maybe one time to the people around you and the ones who don't get it, bless them and release them and focus on the people that can ride with you till the year 2043. Do you get what I'm saying? Because that's what Kenny Gamble did. And that's why Kenny Gamble is going to die a multimillionaire and a major property owner in downtown Philadelphia, where the property is super expensive now because the white folks came back in. Give me, do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe. You're watching drboystv.com, the home for intelligent black people. Uh, we're releasing a movie this weekend. I'm going to be doing also a workshop in Atlanta uh, this weekend. Uh, Rick Mathis, the director of our new movie called B1 The Movie, uh, he is going to do a red carpet event in Atlanta this weekend, the weekend of Marcus Garvey's birthday, which is, uh, I guess, the 17th through the 19th, something like that. Um, I'm going to do a workshop on Saturday. So if you go to the new Black Wall Street, you can find me there. Uh, I'll be there you know, doing the workshop on Saturday. I'll probably sign a few books. I'm not going to be there the whole four days, but Saturday I'll definitely be there for the workshop. So feel free to go to b1themovie.com, be the number one themovie.com. Also, this podcast is on Spotify. So if you want to find us on Spotify, uh, look me up on Spotify uh, and uh, you can find me there. And last but not least, uh, we have a Black Investors channel on Telegram where you can get uh, you know, financial tips, stock, stock market information, stuff like that. So if you'd like to follow me on Telegram, just go to drboystelegram.com. Uh, that's right there on the screen. Doctor, It's totally free, totally free. It's from the Black Business School. All right. So uh, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Let's fin <clears throat> let's go. Let's let's drill into Clarence Avon. OK, so if you want to put something in the chat, you can say Dr. Watkins starts talking about Avon at the 18 minute and 16 second mark. OK, I want you all to do that because I know sometimes I, I, I get the Holy Ghost and I can't help it. I can't ignore God. All right. So anyway, Clarence Avon um, was known as the Godfather of or the black Godfather. They did. They did a whole Netflix documentary about him as the black Godfather. And uh, he was connected. The man was super connected to a lot of great people. Uh, you see him there with Jay-Z and Diddy. And I don't know who this other person is, but I'm sure he's important because he's in the picture. Uh, either that or he was a very lucky waiter. I'm not sure which one. And uh, anyway, uh, Clarence was uh, a guy who uh, was connected and respected. Uh, they're, they're, the Netflix documentary about him is extremely good. And, uh, and he accomplished a lot. Uh, he discovered people like Bill Withers. Uh, remember that song, Love the Day? Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, right? And he, he discovered Sarah Vaughn. Uh, he made a lot of deals uh, happen in the background, from what I understand. And he was a power broker. Now, uh, the other thing that I admire about this man is that he had a wife uh, for 54 years. And there, there's his wife. Um, I don't have her name in front of me. I should have her name, and I'm so sorry. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find her name because I, I hate the, I hate showing somebody and not saying their name. Uh, let me see here. Uh, his wife. His wife's name is Jacqueline, Jacqueline. And Jacqueline, um, she was killed a few months ago. Just uh, I don't understand what happened there. I don't know what was going down. 
But uh, it was very, very unfortunate and uh, very terrible. And I can only imagine going through something horrible like that at the age of 91, 92 years old. And um, and so but they had a lot of good years together. They lived together for many, many years. They built together for years. And uh, and and I just really think that uh, black love should be celebrated. I think that we should really applaud uh, those those ancestors in the community and those elders in the community who. Uh, who understood the importance of having that good woman next to you or that good man next to you. Uh, I can only imagine the stories they, they would have to tell about the, the difficulties of staying together through, through all those years in the middle of money, fame, and fortune, and all these things that distract from relationships. So uh, to me, that's uh, part of his legacy that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, now, he in his documentary, uh, The Black Godfather, uh, Clarence tells a lot of great stories about uh, people that he's worked with throughout the years. Uh, there he is with um, my number one hero, Muhammad Ali. My, Ali is a tie for Malcolm X, for my two, the two, my two greatest heroes of all time. Uh, but then in terms of uh, top five uh, living, uh, it would be people like uh, Kenny Gamble, Dr. Claude Anderson, Dr. George C. Frazier, and there's a couple others whose names don't come to mind right away, but, 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 uh, but, but definitely those three in the top five. And, uh, and so Clarence, uh, you know, he, he was connected. You know, he worked with a lot of great people and did a lot of great work. And, uh, had, and he was very well respected in the industry uh, before he passed. Uh, the other thing that's really fascinating to me is, and this is important, I think, for us to understand as we sort of look at this man's life. And I encourage you to do that. You know, whenever whenever I talk about someone who dies or I see someone of significance who passes, you know what I do? I, I, I read their Wikipedia page because I, I want to see their life. I want to see where they came from. I want to see what they went through. I want to see what they overcame. I want to see where they uh, how they got to where they were. This is important. You know, this is this is almost like a spiritual autopsy. I encourage everybody to do this. I encourage everybody to do like a spiritual autopsy of anybody that you admire, anybody that you look up to. And it doesn't have to just be a black person. I, I saw just the other day something where they were pointing out the house that Walt Disney was was born in, you know, and the struggles his parents went through and the struggles that he went through. And I think those things are extremely important to understand how you're going to build your empire, how you're going to leave a great legacy for your kids and understanding and just accepting the fact that it's going to be freaking hard. It's going to be really difficult. You're going to fail on many occasions. I wake up every day and my goal every day is to fail as much as possible because the more I fail, the more I learn. And that, me, that makes me better at what I do. You can't be great. You can't be tough. You can't be strong. You can't be capable if you don't know how to make a lot of mistakes uh, and possibly get punched in the face a few times. There, there are very few tough people in this world who didn't go through a lot of hell in order to get there. Typically, heaven is on the other side of your hell. So I would encourage you to learn about your heroes and look at what hell that they went through. You know, read about their lives. You know, look and say, well, when they were my age, what were they going through? And then what will happen is you'll say, like when I looked at Muhammad Ali, when I was going through um, a, a battle at Syracuse University, I'll use a personal story here. Uh, when I was at Syracuse, it didn't go well. Uh, you know, I'm a loud mouth. I'm radical. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black man and I don't apologize for it. That did not fit well with their culture. That just wasn't what they expected a finance scholar to do. I had all the credentials. I was the only black man on the planet to get a PhD in finance. That's 100 that year, that year. Uh, there was no male or female that year. They got it. So I was literally the golden child in that regard, which made them believe that I was a fit for their culture. It made them think that I was going to fit right in. It made them think falsely, which is which has been true for many black folks, that if you come in and you play the game and you simply act like us, we can overcome the fact that you're black and give you opportunities. And believe me, opportunities were offered to me. My first job after I graduated was in the six figures. <clears throat> But the challenge I had was that I had a bigger vision. I had some things I wanted to do. I wanted to connect with the community. And it was a battle. It was a fight. It was unfair. It pissed me off. It wasn't right. You know, for, I'll give you one little example that was hilarious. I they they would they would one one thing that they claim that they measure you on as a scholar is what they call scholarly impact, right? And scholarly impact is how much impact does your work have on the world, right? And uh, and so so they would uh, in the in the in the business school at Syracuse they would put on the cover on the uh, on the website or or whatever like whenever one of their scholars got featured in the local paper they'd be like oh so and so got mentioned in the Syracuse whatever local paper uh, because they're doing work on blah 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 that same week that they mentioned the white people who were uh, mentioned on local news I might have been on CNN three times that week literally CNN three times national news not local national three times. And they would not say a word. They would say nothing about it. And I remember I was so mad and I was like, that's, that's a bunch of crap. That's a bunch of BS. That ain't fair. I didn't like it, right? But the thing I learned from that experience was that life ain't fair. 
it's and not everybody is for you and every every place isn't meant for you to be and i and, and honestly in in hindsight i have no ill will toward them because it was sort of recognizing that disparity or that difference in vision or perspective that led me to do what I do right now, right? And so so now I'm enormously more successful than I ever would have been had they been nice to me. So sometimes, you know, I know sometimes it sucks when you go through things like racism or it sucks when you don't get what you think you deserve in that moment. But I encourage you to just keep on going because if you're truly good at what you do, if you're truly grinding as hard as you can and learning and getting better and, and constantly trying to grow, you will get what's coming to you you will get your reward. So I encourage you, keep on going. The reward is out there for you. Don't give up on yourself, okay? So so uh, anyway, with, with Clarence Avon, I look at this guy and I, I, I oh, and actually the reason I brought that story up was because uh, when I, you know, guys said like Clarence Avon and also to, in, in that particular case, it was Muhammad Ali. I remember at that time, I was really down about what I was going through with Syracuse and I started reading Ali's life story. And I saw how with Ali, they took away his, his whole career Right at the peak of his career, right when he was at his boxing peak, they told him he couldn't box anymore. So he had to spend several years not being able to fight. He, he was losing money. He was struggling. Uh, he, he, he didn't know if he was ever going to get to fight again. And he was the best fighter in the world. That had to be infuriating. That had to be very frustrating. But he continued to move forward. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if he can deal with that, then I can deal with this little problem I got here. If, if he fought through all of that and he's the greatest. The key for him to be the greatest was that he had to stick to his guns. The key for him to be the greatest is that he had to keep on going. The key to, for him to be remembered the way he's remembered is for him to remain consistent, stay solid with it. So that's what I encourage you to do. When you're going through the fire and going through the storm, stay solid, stay consistent, continue to be who you are. Don't flinch. That's it, because the world will try to get you to flinch. And, and if you flinch, that that you might end up killing something that could have been extraordinary, okay? So so keep going, keep going, all right? So anyway, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. You're watching drboystv.com, the home for intelligent black people. As I mentioned to you guys, I have a new book out. It's called The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. Uh, you don't have to be black to, uh, to read this book and learn from the book, but it is written for black people. And uh, if you'd like to get a copy, my kids will mail you a copy. And you can even get an autograph if you want to. Just go to Dr. Boyce books.com and uh, in fact if you use the code word book club all one word book club you can get 30 percent off anything in the store that means you get 30 percent off our flashcards for kids 30 percent off our workbooks for children 30 percent off any other book series i have like black american money or financial love making uh all that so just use the code word book club and you can get 30 percent off that's my gift to you all right so uh hit the thumbs up button thumbs up thumbs up share subscribe uh we're talking about the passing of the great clarence avon and, and so with Clarence, uh, one of the things that's interesting about Clarence Avant to me is that this is a guy who, uh, in my view, I, I, I can't I can't see his passing as a complete loss. Right. It's sad. It's it's like the end of an era. You know, it, it kind of it sucks. Death is never really something that you get excited about. But let me just tell you, I mean, the man lived to be 92 years old. You can't ask for much more than that. I mean, I think the average life expectancy for a black man is what, 72, 73 years old. So the man lived to be 92 years old. Uh, he lived life his way. He helped a lot of people along the way. He left an impact like crazy. He left a hell of an impact. Uh, he, he left it all on the court, so to speak. You know, and uh, and and I think that if you're going to learn about this, learn something from this man's life, I would encourage you to kind of look at it that way. You know, look at the fact that he lived life his way. He lived it as a boss. Uh, he didn't constantly walk around believing that things like racism would keep him from ever fulfilling his destiny. He wasn't, he, you know, he worked with white folks, but he was not intimidated by white folks. He did not let white people talk him out of his greatness or talk him out of his destiny. And as a result, you know, this man's going to be remembered a long time. I think his daughter's married to the CEO of Netflix. You talk about leaving a legacy. I mean, his daughter's connected to one of the most powerful people on the planet. She is one of the most powerful people on the planet. I mean, Netflix is massive. Uh, you know, he's, he's worked with some of the most influential entertainers of all time. Uh, he has uh, done at least, you know, in the, the documentary they presented. Now, don't get me wrong. These Netflix documentaries, you know, they, a lot of people make these Netflix documentaries because they want they want to create a certain image. So I don't know. Again, I'm sure that there's some complications with the legacy. Right. I'm sure that there are people who might say uh, things about him that are less than favorable. But the truth of the matter, here's another reality. Y'all got to understand is that you can't play above the rim and live in the halls of power without eventually having some enemies. You can't. You can't operate in a space. Look at that. I mean, you got Diddy, Jay-Z, and Clarence Avon, and the other brother. I wish I knew his name. I don't know his name. But, you know, 
you you don't you don't get a chance to be in these spaces without at some point having uh some uh competition let's say and and so uh so i would encourage you to also understand that when you are rising up that ladder when you start to achieve things and you start to have uh, people that have a mixed opinion of you or people that, that amplify every mistake you ever made or want to attack you at every turn, just know that that comes with the territory. That's going to come with the territory. So I would encourage you to, as you rise, because everybody, how many of y'all want to be successful? How many of you want to be leaders? How many of y'all want to be bosses? How many of you want to be business owners? How many of you want to be wealth builders? Give me a yes in the chat. Let's own it. Let's claim it. Claim it in the chat right now. Um, if you're in that category, I think another thing to prepare yourself for is dealing with the fact that you're not going to do everything perfectly. You're not going to make everybody happy. You're not going to get everybody's approval. And you're going to have some people who simply hate you because you remind them of the areas in which they failed. Your success is going to be almost like when the pretty girl walks in the room and the older women get mad at her because they know that their husbands are going to notice how pretty she is. The pretty girl, the pretty 25 year old doesn't even she's not trying to hurt nobody. She's trying to be friends with everybody. And she doesn't understand why this 42 year old woman who she thinks is going to be her mentor is actually scowling at her and refuses to speak to her. Well, uh, uh, you know, a lot of that comes from the fact that she is showing up uh, in, 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 you know, it, in a way that 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 really amplifies the fact that God blessed her, right? She's her her shine is just there, and she can't help it. She can't help that she's pretty. She's not going to make herself ugly just to make other people comfortable, right? And that's the thing. Sometimes when you're talking about becoming beautiful and successful in your own way, you have some people that feel better if you're failing or if you're uh, not if you aren't getting what you want out of life. And I encourage you not to listen to any of that. I I, I encourage you to just understand that the more you uh, become endowed with the blessings that are meant for you, the more you're going to have some people that are uncomfortable with that, or you're going to have adversaries, or maybe in some cases you may, you know, make just a huge mistake, but, but you got to keep going and you got to believe in yourself. And I think Clarence Avant, again, even though I'm sure his legacy is more complicated than the Netflix documentary led on, uh, the man was a winner. The dude was a winner, you know, and, uh, and I don't know a lot of people who can be winners who don't have, uh, some sore losers around them. I, I just don't, you know, uh, I, I, even Barack Obama, think about this. Barack Obama is uh, an incredibly articulate, uh, incredibly intelligent, uh, incredibly successful and very powerful man. But yet, despite the fact that he is intelligent, articulate, powerful, successful, and even friendly as hell, half the country hates his guts. He, I mean, most of y'all ain't got 50, 52 million haters. Barack Obama has 52 million haters. And every day he shows up with a smile. That's impressive. That takes a lot of therapy to get to that point where you can have 52 million haters and still show up with a smile. So Clarence Avant, um, RIP uh, to this great black man. Uh, he will be missed. And uh, there will be other great black godfathers after him. And uh, I think that he's somebody that you can learn from if you go study uh, his legacy. <clears throat> so I encourage everybody to go look at his Wikipedia page, learn what this man accomplished, and hopefully you'll accomplish 10 times as much in your life. Okay, so anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Do me a favor. Please hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, just a reminder, don't forget the All Black National Convention is going to happen uh, in October, October 20th in Atlanta. Uh, you can go to allblacknationalconvention.com. So if you are B1 and black and intelligent and you want to see the community build and you want to connect with other like-minded people, come to the All Black National Convention, uh, allblacknationalconvention.com. We have discounted hotels available for a couple more days. So uh, go ahead and book your ticket. Or you can also uh, be a vendor if you want to sell your product at the event. Also, uh, last but not least, uh, if you want to get Dr. Boyce profit alerts, Sent to you via text message. Uh, you can just text the word stock to 31996. I'll issue a profit alert within the next 24 hours of a stock that I like, a stock that I'm buying. I'm doing research right now. So if you'd like for me to text that to you, uh, just go to or just text the word stock to 31996. All right, guys. So please hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe on your way out of here. Uh, I will see you guys soon. God bless you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you all later. Peace. Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. 
got three degrees, triple ten, three PhDs, now we on the CNN, DBTV, let's talk about negligence, ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence, please none of what you hear, half of what you see, let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV, here we are.